everybody. It's Stuart A. Swordlow. And Janet Diane Moya Swordlow. And this is our Expansions News Podcast for the third week of March 2016. Spring. Today's the first day of spring, actually. Although you wouldn't know it from the temperature outside. Nope. It was under freezing today. Yeah. Yeah. And it's supposed to snow until the first week of April. Well, usually it snows till here till around the first of June. Yeah, isn't that lovely? Mm -hmm. Don't you want to come and live in Michigan? <laughs> I like all the change of seasons. Do you know that I checked, it's actually warmer in Novosibirsk today than here. I would live there too. I, I haven't been there yet, but I'd go. I, I like Novosibirsk. It's my favorite place in the world. But you haven't invited me well, to I go with you. Well, I shouldn't say that in case Polish people watch it. I like Poland also. Yeah, it depends on who you're talking to where your favorite place in the world is, right? right. Like I tell each, each of my children, like, you're my favorite. Don't tell anybody. Yeah. Else. Well, I do too. Yeah, I say that to all of them. I do that to my husband. I, I say to you, you're, yeah, my, you're I know. my favorite husband. Yeah, I found your text, okay? Yeah, right. Yeah. To all those generals and people that want to yeah, marry me my with, with a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. And, and doctors. Yeah. Just put $5,000 in my account so I can transfer. Transfer. Yeah, and if you're a general and a doctor with money, you're up on my list. Jan, so. I'll marry you. Yeah, so go ahead and she keep sending care. in those offers. She's like a Mormon. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. More men, get it? <laughs> Very funny. I'm brilliant. Yeah. As long as they're a doctor. I'm so brilliant, I scare myself. Listen to me. As long as they're a doctor and a general with a lot of money, I'm good. All right? So this, far, is me. This, this is me. Bye bye. So far, bye. You, don't, you don't fit any of those bills. Hey. You're not a doctor, you're not a general, and you don't have a lot of money. But I am the emperor of an intergalactic empire. Well, then, but my okay. title is not yet emperor. And when my people come, you and say, them are in big trouble. You're going to get me and my, yeah. my doctor general yeah. guy. Vaporization. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, with him. And you. Oh. It's like, bye, Janet. I, 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 mean, I might sell a little vials of your vapor on, on the internet after that. Okay. Back to me. You said vial. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And speaking of vial, I know what you'll be talking about later, and it's vial. Don't touch it. Anyway, I'm not, I, I'm, I ain't touching nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of this kind of thing. Yeah. You remember, was it a week or so ago, I reported about the Palestinian television show from Gaza that talked about wife beating? Oh, yeah. Well, there's an update. Because apparently in Pakistan... And in other other Muslim Arab countries, there are chauvinistic television shows where religious talk shows have become a major source of information for many women who are seeking guidance on their relationships with their husbands. So, one popular show uh, has a, a religious cleric sitting behind a desk uh, taking anonymous calls from uh, viewers seeking advice, and most of them are women, believe it or not. And on a recent broadcast, one caller, who was very timid, called in and asked the religious cleric how she might improve her relationship with her husband. And he was very indifferent to the caller, and very annoyed, annoyed, and he says, I don't understand your question. What are you trying to get? And she said, well, I want to see how I can be a friend with my husband. What do you mean, the cleric asked, with more irritation. Well, he comes from work with things in his mind and I would love to be the wife where he can share what's in his mind with me so I can better support him but I don't know how to do that. It's a good this question. is from Pakistan. This is uh, from, it doesn't say what kind, it's a Muslim country. Mm -hmm. So then he was really snappy at her and he said, you women complain too much. All you need to do is clean the house, cook good food, Make sure the kids make their, have done their homework, and by the time your husband arrives, you should have your best clothes on, put your perfume on, have the kids all dressed up, sitting and waiting for him with warm food. That's all you need to do. Maybe when he's relaxed and happy, after you make sure that everything is perfect in the house, maybe then he will open up to you. Do you have other questions? Hmm? Sounds like the U.S. in the 1950s. Well, it's Arab country today. So the woman hung up. Now, one of the most popular hosts with millions of viewers, his name is Mohammed Al-Arifi, and he has uh, talking to young men about various issues, and in one segment he explains to men the rules for beating their wives. Isn't that nice? And he says, and I quote, Just like you don't beat a donkey or a camel from its face, if you want to steer it in the right direction, you should not beat a woman from her face. There are other areas of her body 
where you were allowed to beat her from, such as her arms, her legs, her back, where it does not show in public. Yeah, see, anyway, because they're all covered in all that stuff. Oh, excuse me. Well, let me finish before I call him, okay? Mm -hmm. He says, all Muslim women are expected to cover from head to toe, thus bruises on her arms and legs would not show. So a beating is a form of discipline. You should beat from areas that can send a message, but not create permanent deformity. Okay, mm -hmm. These, this is countries that we're sending financial aid to. Okay, And, uh, of course, in those countries, women have no legal recourse for marital rape whatsoever, all these things. So I think we should send more money to those countries and support uh, these, uh, these ideas, because these are the countries that we're giving money to, military aid, wonderful, right? Okay, I won't rant about that anymore, but now let's go to my favorite country. What country is that? Russia. Because I don't have to beat you if you had the wrong answer. I have that on, this on film now. <clears throat> I don't care. Go, what you call your Nigerian general? Hello, Nigerian general. Well, he, and the doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the doctor. With yeah. money. The one who wants you to raise all his kids. With a lot of cause money. Because they lost their mother. With a lot right. of money. Just have to put a few thousand in his account so he can get over here. No, no. Yeah, I, I might give him some money for that. Anyway, uh, the Russians have found. The That's root. my story. The 12,000 year old puppy? Yes, I have that story. Hold on, I won't. No, you can go ahead and tell well, the story. Well, did you talk about what's opening up in China? Uh, kind of, but you can tell the story. Well, no, I don't feel like it. No, you have to tell the story. Now that you started it, you'll be, well, they, they won't be able to concentrate until they get to mine. So. All right. Well, they found the, the remains of a 12,400-year-old puppy. Now, how they know it's 12,400, not 12,399. Or I don't know how they knew the exact age, mm -hmm. but they did. And they found it near the village of Tumat in the Sakha Republic of Russia. And 70% uh, to 80% of the brains of this puppy are preserved. And it's apparently a species that doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. So sci South Korean scientist Wang Wu Sok. How would you like to go through life with that name? Hello, Mr. Sok. Anyway, he uh, attended the autopsy of this puppy, took some samples, and is going to clone it. And apparently has already cloned a woolly mammoth. And did you know that they have built an animal cloning facility in China that's opening this year? That one I didn't know about, but it doesn't surprise me because yeah. they have everything cloned. Right. Anyway, I thought that was an interesting, now they have you know, prehistoric dogs well, remember last running week? around with the woolly mammoths yeah. and the saber-toothed tigers. Yeah, and the little lion cub I talked about last week. So. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Uh, yeah. Now, there's a woman named Alex Cooper. A woman? Well, she's a lesbian. Ah. She's 21 years old, and she wrote a book called Saving Alex, where she tells about telling her parents that she's a lesbian when she was 15 years old, mm -hmm. but they were Mormons. Nice. Big mistake, because they decided to put her through eight months of conversion therapy, and because of that she had a suicide attempt, and other cruel things were done to her by the Mormons, mm -hmm. including... She had to stand against the wall with a backpack full of rocks, and she couldn't stand the pain, and she had to shift her foot from side to side. And then uh, the conversion therapy leaders told her that her family didn't want her, and God had no place for people like her in his plan, because God doesn't create everything. He only creates heterosexual white people in Utah. I guess Everybody so. Everybody else does. And Mormons. And, well, duh. You have to be a Mormon. Yeah. And, uh, and they also... Uh, punched her right in the stomach to, 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 to convert her. Terrible. Yeah, so the Mormon-led conversion groups in Utah, led by a husband and wife team, um, who repeatedly told the teenage Cooper that she was there because she was gay and that they would change her sexuality. So she says, that's like sending you to therapy to change your eye color. It's not going to happen. It's going to damage you. Mm -hmm. But did you know that conversion therapy is legal in 47 states. Like this? Yeah. Religious or just Hello, in general? Hello, you're allowed to do this. You're allowed to do this? I just, did I just say this that? Is, this did is I just say 47 states allow listen this? Listen to me. This is as bad as what you just read about in the Muslim states about the women. That's my point. That's why the stories are on the same podcast, okay? And, and the U.S. government wanted to ban the practice, but no action's been taken on it. 
But guess what? There's a saving. Guess who's going to do it? Hillary. Hillary Clinton said when she becomes president, she's going to ban the practice as part of her president. You know why? Because she's a lesbian. Mm -hmm. But I can't believe that this is legal in the U.S. 47 states. That's I'd like to know horrible. which three are not. I don't know. They didn't name which one. Um, I don't know. By, only by religious groups? Or what kind of therapist would do this? It just said then? that it's legal. I'm going to look that one up. Yeah, you look it up. I will. That's terrible. And then you contact Hillary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's go to South America and Asia at the same time. Is this any better? Well, maybe not. Because in 2012, the leaders of China and Argentina uh, created a deal called the Deep Space Station. And it's supposed to be completed by the end of this year. And it is a ground station in the Southern Hemisphere for the, to support program for moon exploration and other space activities. That's interesting because in South America is where Fr the France and the U.S. have things in French Guiana. Well, people are afraid that China may be using it for a military purpose. Shock. And that there are secret clauses that have not been revealed to the public. And uh, this uh, agreement allows China to have this uh, uh, establishment in uh, uh, southern Argentina uh, for the use and facility of the benefit of its own space program. So Argentina wants to have a space program, like Gauchos in Space or something mm -hmm. like that. I, I mean, really. They Argen might already Argentina have one. with a space program, really. You know, they might already have a program. There's a lot of They things. don't even have an Earth program, okay? They, they might be connected to the Nazi program. You know, they did some well, well, there. Let me finish. Okay. Because, uh, now this is really the funny part. Because officials in China said that military personnel would be running it, but it's a totally civilian operation, not operated by military personnel. Okay, in the same sentence you just said, military personnel, personnel are running it, but it's not operated by military personnel. Okay, you get out right now. You go. Okay, because that makes no sense. And China has not given out much information to the public about this remote facility, which is in Argentina's Patagonia. Remember, it's in the southern part of Argentina. We were there, yeah. actually. And guess where it's close to? Antarctica. Well, right, that's my point. But here's where it gets a little interesting, because just last, earlier this week, Argentina sank a Chinese fishing boat. No, I, didn't, I didn't hear about that. Sank it, because it was fishing in uh, their Ill illegally in Too international. Too close. Yeah. yeah. So... It looks like this trouble in paradise to me. Looks like it. Looks it. like no Chinese takeout for the Argentinians after this, you know. Okay, so is that it? Yeah, I had enough. All right, well, I have Except quite for my questions for my readers mm -hmm. after you're done. All right, well, I have quite a bit. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. All right, first of all, I have, of course, Trump stories, because what would our news be without Trump, right? That's all there is. That's the all news. there is. So anyway, apparently, um, Cruz decided that he would support Trump. Cruz. Ted Cruz. Yes. Oh, it was the melted face. Yes, mm -hmm. because he said that he will support the eventual Republican nominee next November. And he's anticipating right now it's going to be Trump, because he's the front well, runner. Think. And the, here's the interesting thing. Listen to this. He said that there would only be one example where I would no longer support Donald Trump. What would that be? If, for example, he were to go out on Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody, I would not be willing to support Donald Trump. Oh, that's a brilliant statement. But isn't that weird? Yeah. I just think that's weird because the thing is, we know it's all orchestrated. So there's a reason why... I know. <laughs> there's a reason why he said that. Now, speaking of Mormons, apparently Donald Trump questioned... Mitt Romney's Mormon faith yeah, I heard at Utah. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, well, the Pope questioned Trump's faith. Yes, his Christian faith. So the issue which I brought up when this happened with the Pope is, this, again, they're bringing politics and religion together. That's New World Order stuff. So I thought that was interesting. That's why I brought that forward. And then the Kremlin condemned Donald Trump in a pre-election no. clip that he made for demonizing Russia. No. Because he wanted to cast doubts on Hillary's ability to deal with Putin, so he cast Russia as a U.S. foe. Mm. Now, this is after Putin has uh, endorsed Trump as being the best person um, and called him the absolute front-runner of the presidential race in his annual end-of-the-year mm -hmm. press conference. And he also said Trump wants to create a deeper relationship with Russia, so now they're upset 
because um, he was casting Russia as a U.S. foe. I see. Okay, so we'll see what happens with that. A U.S. foe, not a U.F.O. Yeah, a U.S. foe. Okay. So anyway, and then, now this was also interesting because Marla Maples is in the I news. I ran into her one time. I know, you told me that, and Donald was very nice to you, actually. He was, actually. So anyway, Marla Maple is, is now Dancing with the Stars. Now, I just think this really? show, you know, I've never watched it, but I mean, it's all over the news all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's just amazing to me that the people, like, are wanting to be on Dancing with the Stars. So now they Mar didn't ask me. Marla Maples, Trump's ex-wife, is on here during this presidential, mm -hmm. you know, nomination process. And then his daughter, or their daughter together, Marla Maples and Donald Trump's daughter named Tiffany, like Tiffany. in... Tiffany's, the like, jewelry store. Ah, like breakfast with at, and Tiffany's. Yes, it was talking about how wonderful her mother is and how she's in shape and so forth. Mm -hmm. But again, another Trump in the news. So this is what's in people's mind. These are the subliminals. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to mention that because I knew you'd want to know. And now you and I have been talking a lot about South Carolina, right? Yes. Okay, now we have North Carolina, a North Carolina military family that is t supporting Donald Trump. Now, there's the interesting things. Apparently, they interviewed it, um, some, <clears throat> I can't remember who it is, but it's in the links. Anyway, there's a woman named Grace. Okay, get the name Grace, Grace. which is a religious name. Right. Grace Tilly has tattoos, and she's in this family. And so, Grace says that her tattoos are religious and have nothing to do with the neo-Nazi theme or white supremacy. So, that little picture of Hitler has nothing to do with However, the Nazis. Those tattoos, apparently, one is Odin's cross, mm -hmm. which is a Celtic cross tattoo on that's, her right hand. Yes, that's okay. They're saying that's popular amongst white supremacists. It's an old symbol before I know. they ever existed. And then she also has a large 88, which according to the Southern Poverty Law Center, I didn't know such a thing existed, that means Heil Hitler. It does. Because H is the eighth letter of the alphabet, so since she has HH, that's another favorite among white supremacists. What if it means hello, honey? Now, the interesting thing to me is, of course, again, North Carolina, they're talking about um, uh, Nazi theme, white supremacy, and symbolism. Well, they know about that stuff. Now, last week, I reported on a double heart, which meant pedophilia. Yeah, wow. So my feeling is, is they're trying to bring in symbolism to people, as again part of New World Religion, mm -hmm. so that people will understand, quote unquote, these hidden symbols. And mm -hmm. people are going to start looking for symbols, and I believe reacting to them. Well, here's the thing. Yeah. Most alien cultures, they use symbols, they use words. Right. So that's what this is about. It's an alien imposition of communication. Okay, there you go. And now, speaking of Antarctica, we're not going there yet, but in the Arctic Circle, well, we were already there. you and I were there, in the Arctic Circle, the U.S. Navy shows the USS Hartford, which is a submarine, emerging from beneath the yeah. ice. Did you see that? Yeah, and you know what it reminded me of? A what? scene from X-Files they had that, where the submarine comes up through the ice, yeah. and then the alien is the only one on board. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, this happened on the first part of March. is called Ice Exercise 2016, which the Navy says is a five-week exercise designed to research, test, and evaluate operational capabilities in the region. So I thought that was interesting that they're showing pictures because there's a reason. And then somebody on my Facebook page sent me this article, which I thought was interesting because I'm sure you may or may not know this because it's about your favorite country, which is... Russia. Okay. The, did you know they have a primate of the Russian Orthodox Church? He's a monkey? You said that's, he's what a they call it. that's what they call it, a primate, or him. No, they call that's a religious term. Yeah. Which it's, is the same thing, monkey, religious, same thing. Same thing. Anyway, so he, this primate... Um, his name is in here somewhere. Patriarch Kirill of Moscow and all Russia. His holiness, his holiness, Patriarch Kirill of Moscow and all Russia. But That's I'm his, his holiness, Patriarch of all Russia. He visited the Bellinghausen Station on Waterloo Island in Antarctica the end of February uh -huh. in preparation for the celebration of the 200th anniversary of the discovery of Antarctica by the Russian <laughs> South Polar Expedition. Of course, they're the only ones that say they discovered it. Well, what's interesting, it was uh -huh. what kind of name is Bellinghausen? Isn't that German? Yes. Okay, but so that's what it's called. But this German man, along with Lazarev, Lazarev, is a Russian man, but they named it after the German man. Don't you think that is interesting? It's very confusing. 
Yes, so, so anyway, they said that they reached Antarctica January 28, 1820. Ah, because the Norwegians, so they did that. Okay, but listen to this. January in numerology is a 1, 28 is a 1, and 1820 is an 11. So we have 1, 1, 11. And actually the Germans said they saw Antarctica like in 1804. They didn't happen to stop there, but right. they, so they found it first. Okay, well anyway, so the Germans, I was on... January 28th, 1820, 1 -1 mm -hmm. Okay, got that? So anyway, this enabled Russia to assert itself as one of the leaders of the world community in the exploration of the remote icy continent. Of course. Now, why do they need to send this guy to Antarctica? Because uh, 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 it's a religious experience. Well, it's some kind of um, ritual. Mm -hmm. Carol, that's a lot like kill. Anyway, I thought, found that very interesting that they would bother to do that because, I mean, as we know, it's not easy to get to Antarctica. He flew there in a plane from uh, Chile. That, he was smart because we took a ship yeah, and that, that was, was rough. not good. It was very rough. That wasn't good. Okay, so, so, okay. Then, there was a hidden text that was found in a 500-year-old English Bible. Now, I'm repeat, telling you a lot of things that were hidden and now they're not. Mm -hmm. So, this was a hidden text in a 500-year-old Bible. Some scholar just happened to notice that a page was pasted on top of the old one. Before that, they thought it was in perfect condition. Right. So how can you miss Where a was page? that, in England? It was in England. Well, they were drinking the wine. You know, that they always drink there. That was pasted on top of another. You, you're going to see that, right? Yeah. But, but they x-rayed it, and there, lo and behold, there it is. So it has to do with um, their excerpts from Thomas Cromwell's English language called uh, book called The Great Bible. Mm -hmm. And it talks more about what the Reformation was. And it was a slow, complex, gradual process. Well, of course, we are talking about the new religious crusade as well. So they're bringing this forward. And then, I don't know if you heard about this, but they have new scans of King Tut's tomb. I've heard that for years. Now they're claiming it will reveal hidden rooms. And guess this. Guess what they say. They're going to find something. Yes, it could be the discovery of the century. Yeah. It's very important for Egyptian history and the history of the world, they're saying. And so, here we are more. We keep Whoa, telling what is you. In there? It says they're going to do further tests March 31st to discover mm -hmm. more about the newly discovered spaces, which uh -huh. they have already discovered and yeah. they already know what's there. I think the spaces are in their head. Yeah. And then, now, this I had never heard of, where Sydney was switched off all their lights for Earth Hour in Cities. Sydney, Australia? Sydney, Australia. Have you heard of this? Earth Hour Cities. Apparently, this mm -hmm. is the 10th annual Earth Hour. I never even heard of it before. Never did either. A global lights out event designed to highlight the threat from, global, or from climate change. How is turning your lights off going to change climate the weather. Apparently, I'm getting the, here's, listen, I'm going to bring this in later. This is why Australia is not a major, you know, country. There are 350 landmark buildings across the world, include, which are doing this supposedly for 10 years. The Eiffel Tower, the Empire State Building, and Taipei 101. So we have here 350. You know I was in all those places? Yeah. So that's probably maybe why they're doing it. Mm. So 350, 3 plus 5, that's an 8. And Taipei 101, that's an 11. I and I just that, so told you about 1, right? 1, 11, 11. And listen to my stories as we go. Anyway, Lights Off movement started in 2007 in Sydney. Now, do you remember I told you a week or two ago about Donald Trump's thing where his lights went out? And, and he oh, had the yeah. people shouting, turn off the lights, turn off oh, the vaguely. lights, yeah, yeah, yeah. turn off the lights. Oh, oh. And we talked about nobody home, the lights are out. Mm -hmm. So now, this again, this is a global ritual. Yeah, nobody home. Turn off the lights. The lights are out. Well, that's already happened. There's yes, but home. they're imprinting people more and more with everything they do. Now, this was called the weirdest planet ever seen. It's dubbed mm -hmm. HD 20782. Oh, HD 207. That's, that of course. Is. Who doesn't know about that one? Apparently, it's 117 light years from Earth. Ah, Not 110. Weekend trip. But 117. It has the most eccentric orbit ever seen. Now, most people don't know what eccentric orbit is, which I didn't know. And it says, it's, a it's called an eccentric orbit. It means it's not, you know, elliptical. It, yes, it moves in a nearly flattened ellipse, traveling a long path from its star and then making a fast and furious slingshot around the star at its closest approach. Maybe it's on drugs. But listen to this. It's in what's called a binary system. Mm. So we've been talking about this part of the galaxy being turned into a binary system. Mm -hmm. So now they're bringing up a binary system yeah. and a different kind of orbit. So that was interesting. And then we have Ceres, which we brought talked about from time to time, having the, um, they're calling it, of course, a dwarf planet. 
and all the lights that are being seen on it. Now they're saying the lights are sometimes brighter and they sometimes fade, and so they don't know what's causing this erratic Maybe because pattern. Because Trump keeps saying lights out, so it keeps turning the lights down. Maybe. And they turn it up and turn it down. So, Cirrus continues to be in the news. And then... It's a dwarf planet, huh? That's what they're claiming now. So that means there's little dwarfs on there. That could be maybe they're the ones doing it. Mm. So anyway, but that's probably politically incorrect. And I don't if care. we have any Hello. little people so, watching... All the Ewoks out there, sorry. They're going to be writing to us. Oh, okay, they do anyway. Anyway, and then speaking of aliens and alien abductions, mm -hmm. an entire family of five has been missing for three weeks mm. after embarking on a one-day trip to Tulsa. And so, you know, it sounds suspicious to me because they recently got $10,000 in tax returns. Uh -huh. The father took all his possessions. The mother didn't take any. They loaded up their three kids in the car. Uh, okay. And then they've never seen from again. Mm, I'm okay. sure they're in uh, Rio. But listen to the children's name, Isaiah, Leah, and Noah, biblical names. Mm -hmm. Okay? And they're from Tulsa. What's Tulsa backwards? A slut. Yeah, well, they're going to Tulsa. So maybe they have to go backwards for it to say mm -hmm. the other thing. But anyway, so they've been missing, and they're calling it like an alien abduction. And they haven't found them. And they're, maybe they were the, with the aliens. The, re the relatives are saying that um, the police are like not cooperating and looking for them even. Because maybe they know what happened to them. Maybe. So I find that strange. So I'm, we'll be curious to see if we hear any more. So if you live in Tulsa and you find out about these people, let me know. Maybe because they're on Cirrus. Maybe. Now listen to this. Now here's more numbers. This is why this is important. Mm -hmm. You might have seen, this was all over the internet, about a, um, a fatal fall of an L.A. worker from an unfinished high-rise. Yeah, I heard about that. They're calling that suicide. Now, I found this very strange. He was on his second day of his job. He had no reason to be above the third floor. So, most people, if they get a new job, they're excited, and they're going to do a good job. They're not going to go wandering around without safety harnesses or hats. So, that, I think he was a sacrifice. His name was Joseph. And of course, we just had St. Joseph's Day. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we live in St. Joseph. Yes, and of course, there's Joseph and Jesus and Mary and all that. Mm -hmm. And get his last name, Sabatino. Sabbath, Sabatino. Uh -huh. oh. Okay, so we've mm -hmm. got that, and he's 36, which is a end nine, of a end of a cycle. Mm -hmm. He jumped from the 53rd floor, which supposedly, is which is our, our eight number. Mm -hmm. Very significant. And then, not only that, there was an eight-foot-high metal safety barrier intended to keep construction workers out. So on the 53rd floor, which is an eight, he has an eight-foot-high metal so barrier. So how did he get over that? That's, I don't think very willingly, I don't think it was a suicide. Mm. And then, listen to this, it's a, the Wilshire Grand, it's an 1,100-foot, which there's your 11, mm. uh, a 335-meter, it's another 11, and the office tower is being developed by Korean Airlines. Korean Airlines. You got a now. It's going you to be go. the tallest structure west of the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And then they go on to say, at any one time, 1,000, there's your one, workers are on the site on any given day. So this whole thing. But you know, he landed on a woman's car. That's what they claim. Of course, he was dead. You know what's playing on her radio? What'd she say? It's raining men. Oh, it's not even funny. Something well, she, happened she to this man. Funny either. But again, I it's want. It's like, oh no, that did not just happen. I want you to keep his last name in mind because mm -hmm. one of my last stories, I'm going to be referring back again to this Sabatino story. Now we talked about last time, I think, about the man in Kalamazoo who went crazy over. He was an Uber driver, He's and Uber. I have been saying since they started talking about Uber that that is a German term. <laughs> da. Okay. Uber. Deutschland Uber alles. Now listen to this. The man who did the shootings, Jason Dalton, told officers that it feels like it's coming from the phone itself. It was like an artificial presence. Mm, he was mind controlled. He told, he told officers that when you plug into the Uber app, you can actually feel the presence on you. And then he said when the officers pulled him over, the reason he didn't shoot them was because the normally red Uber app had changed to black. And then he told investigators, quote, he doesn't want to come across as a crazy person. He no, was sad I just to killed a few people. He was sad crazy. for the people who were killed, as well as his own family members who are going to have to hear about this. Yeah. And then when the police asked him what was going through his mind, he said, if you only knew it would blow your mind. He said, when he opened the Uber app, he said, a devil head popped up on his screen, and when he pressed the button on the app, that's when all the button, when all the problems started. So something obviously programming this is why you must keep your brown merger <sighs> archetype at the pineal 24 7 and in protection he said the devil figure would give you an assignment it would literally take over your whole body he added that at some point with the uber app you don't have to drive at all the car just goes 
and then he was seeing himself outside of his body. And then um, he said that when it, the app went from black to red, he felt like he was no longer being guided. So it is possible that his specific phone was programmed and that did happen. It is possible. It's possible. And then he said that his wife told investigators mm -hmm. that uh, this man, her husband, warned her the night of the shootings that, quote, they couldn't go back to work anymore, the kids could not go back to school, and she would understand when she saw the news that night. Mm -hmm. Now, at that time, she was watching the news, and the first shooting had happened. However, when um, she asked her husband before he left what that meant, he just said she would see what it was, was when she watched the news, it probably wouldn't say his name, but as soon as she saw it on the news, she knew it would be him. So that means he knew in advance before he But listen over. to this. He told police he doesn't remember telling anyone to watch the news. So it was obviously activated before, and everything just kept rolling in him. Mm -hmm. So, again, mind control at its finest, they're telling you about this. So, brown merger symbol, lots of heavy protection. Mm. Now, speaking of mind control and programming, Here's a mother of five who has spent over $500,000 on surgery to look like Barbie. Now, I keep bringing this Barbie thing up. For Why don't you do that? A couple of reasons. I don't have $500,000. No, but you, you just look like Barbie. I just, just beautiful. Mm. Uh, well, I'm true. I'm, I'm beautiful from who I am from the inside. Oh, well, you're attracting all those Nigerian generals anyway. That's right. So with, why do you need and to doc change anything? And doctors with money, mm -hmm. so I don't need to do this. And besides, a 28-H breast, I, I know think what that means. it's very big, and I would probably have to have a wheelbarrow to pull, port them around in. I don't yeah, want to do that, or a sling or something, yeah. and I don't want to do that with uh -huh. crap my stuff. Well, I brought me to tell you something after. But breasts. you know what? If I did cooking shows with that, I bet you we'd have a lot of views. With I 20, bet you with would. With 28-H breasts. Especially topless. But if, no, with you wouldn't even have to be topless, but the thing is to reach the stove. You just cook right on them. I guess, kind of like a Wouldn't plate. have any feeling anyway. Maybe. That's true. So anyway... Um, Barbie continues to be in the news. Barb, that's something sharp. You mm -hmm. know, it's a barb. So we have yeah, the barb Like what people. you stick me with every day. Yeah. Anger. Mm -hmm. Barbie is angry. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, listen to this. Her husband and children think she's really proud. She, uh, They're proud of her. Sure they are. And that she has 27,000 Instagram followers. Ooh. I bet you I'd get 270,000 for my cooking show if I did that. Well, let's see. And so, but the thing is, you can't, unless I get one of these generals, because her husband bought her a $247,000 pink Porsche to go along uh, with her look. I can't compete with that. No, and then she, her husband also has two private jets. He's probably one of these what guys that... What does he that, do? They don't say. But anyway, um, it, she, but the husband and the children take pictures of her in racy poses. So. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, she's a 42, in case you want to know. Mm. Then, that, that's her IQ or her age? Maybe both. Oh. Anyway, then the next, so that's programming. Don't, don't do this to yourself, people. Don't look like Barb. You don't want to be a Barb. Anyway, uh, animal studies link Splenda to cancer. Now, where have we heard oh, that before? What a, a flash. Yeah, so don't take Splenda in your stuff. It, it's a uh, bug killer. It's a guy who was developing bug killer and uh, he tasted it by mistake when he like, had his hand on his face. Mm -hmm. It was sweet, so now yeah, that's... That's like John Kerry saying, you know, I have determined that ISIS is committing genocide. Yeah. Oh, Really? really? Thanks. Yeah. We didn't know that. Yeah. So anyway, again, but I'm just putting that forward because now we have scientific n news and data to back up what we've been telling you for years. Don't take Splenda, please. Now this was kind of interesting because it's local, because there were scores of dead crows ha that have been found along railroad tracks in southern Michigan. Mm. They uh, have fractures in their bones, and so because it was by a railroad track, they're claiming that it was... Uh, a train that hit them. Yeah, in the sky, and they went right back down on the tracks. Yeah, and I brilliant. Think, I think personally, that sounds like a left. They must hang out with Barbie. Maybe. And now here's another thing they're telling about that could rewrite history. Like maybe the train hit them <clears throat> in the sky or something. That's exactly what. Yeah, they said. I, I'm so sure. Yeah. Anyway, there was a tiny Viking crucifix found in Denmark, well, which was exactly Viking. like guess where Sweden, because Sweden's in the news every day now. And they're claiming that it's so important that that could rewrite history because of the movement of Christian faith. So, history books will need to be rewritten. Yeah, I'll say. Is what they're saying in the article. So, this mm -hmm. is the second one I'm telling you about. They keep telling you they're rewriting your history. Oh, okay, here's the puppy story. I can't tell that one because you already well, said Well, maybe it. you have new information have, nope, in there. Same information. I said you could have said uh, it. I have to cross that one out now. And mm -hmm. did you know that Joseph Stalin's uh, granddaughter yeah. is alive and well? I'm so glad to hear that because, yeah, you know, her, 
her grandpa and my great uncle like to each other. That's why I'm telling the story because I thought that it would be of interest to you specifically. Mm -hmm. She was born uh, named Olga at birth, which is interesting because when I was growing up, I actually lived on Olga Street. Mm -hmm. Believe that. I have a friend named Olga. Yeah. Anyway, she now lives in Portland, Oregon, and tells her mother was Svetlana Alioyeva. Uh, Alleluia. Hallelujah to you too. Hallelujah to you too. Anyway, she was the only daughter of Joseph Stalin, and the granddaughter is 44, and she's tattooed up, and she's changed her name now mm -hmm. to Cherise, I guess. So anyway, but I wanted you to know that she's alive and well. I'm so glad to hear that. In case there are any like stories of your great uncle and her grandfather. And See, the, the Russians love stories of yeah. uh, descendants of famous historical figures yeah. who lived in America and then come back. Okay, and this one, again, Joseph, Joseph, J-O-S-E-F. Remember that. Then we have a woman who appears to vanish on live television and causes mass internet confusion. Now, we keep seeing these kind of stories, and that's why I bring this up. Yeah, but I thought it was just because someone walked in front of her. They did, but the point being is, is that they continue to say, look at all these people who are appearing and disappearing on camera. I think this is getting them used to that, you know, the thing where they just beam people up and they're gone kind of thing, like Star Wars or Star Trek or whatever that was. So these kind of stories are going all over the internet all the time. What are you looking at? Nothing. No, look over here. Because I have interesting things. Because if you're not careful, this is what we might do next. What? It's a new Brazilian hair treatment called Ooh. Velaterapia. What does it do? That means, it, they, it's called, it means candle therapy to your ah. hair. Ooh. Now, again, this reminds me of New World Religion like stuff. Like you put candles in your hair? Kind of. Well, remember the Santa Lucia? Isn't that the one that is with the candles in the hair? Santa Lucia. Yeah. That's the one with the candles. But this one, they take your hair and they put it in different styles, and then they cauterize it with candles, and they embroider it. So it's like permanently in your hair. Well, no. They take, they just to, for a few seconds, it says. Uh -huh. Oh, it costs $180. And they said the smell isn't too bad, it doesn't hurt, it's quick. But it still reminds me, if you're going to put candles in your hair, it reminds me of ritual stuff. You think? I think. So, that's why I'm bringing that to you. And now here's more ritual stuff. This is kind of, as I move into this stuff, Courtney Stodden, who I don't know much about her, but I know she's a, some kind mm -hmm. of a celebrity person, I who's the daughter of Krista Keller. And um, Stodden's mother, Krista Keller, revealed that she's in love with her daughter's husband. Now, mm. the daughter's husband is 34 years older than this, than the daughter. Ah, so daddy issues. Yeah, and so when she was, she married this man when she was only 16, and the mother gave permission. Now so he was 50. She, now the mother is saying that she has attraction to the daughter's husband, and so then they talk to the husband about what his fantasy is. Ha oh, don't even tell no, me. I'm not going to. But, but I know what it yeah. is. And so that's, again, what they're promoting publicly. Here you go. More. Now, speaking Do they of have a phone number? On, on just, I'm just curious. Yeah, better be careful. I'm going to call up those generals again. Go so, ahead. Now, listen to this one. This one is about Madonna, which I've been, she's been in the news a lot. I feel so bad for just crying all the time, yeah, right. poor Madonna. Anyway, that, so she's on a tour, um, the Rebel Heart tour. Mm -hmm. And while she was on this tour, someone sent me this story on Facebook. Mm -hmm. She suggestively drinks from a banana. Oh. And then passes that around with like the people on stage with her. So they can suggestively drink from it. Then she gets a bouquet and she walks out to a 10-year-old girl. Now the girl's name is, guess what? Grace. Madonna. This oh. is the second time we've heard Grace, mm -hmm. right? Another religious name. Now we have Madonna and Grace. Mm -hmm. So she asked the girl how old she is. She says she's 10. So Madonna says Madonna would be available in 10 years and to come back and see her. Then she says, I'll wait for you. 10 years for you, baby. Is gay marriage legal here? Well, maybe in 10 years it will be legal, Grace. So I'll wait for you. No, Madonna's... Then she him. says... How can I flirt with a 10-year-old? I'll cross my legs. Maybe that will help. She's saying this to a 10-year-old girl, Where's supposedly. The kid's right there. And she just said, ha, ha, how funny, Madonna. Well, now that, then it gets better. Listen to this one. Now she's in Brisbane, Australia. Mm -hmm. And she has a 17-year-old fan. Although I don't, I don't believe this girl's only 17. I saw her picture. And the girl walks up wearing a teen, wearing a yeah, corset I heard, I heard top. About that. Mm -hmm. And so Madonna says, uh, quote, she's the kind of girl you just want to slap on the ass and pull. And then she pulls down her top and says, sorry, sexual harassment. You can do the same to me. Good luck. Now, 
Don't you I think, think Madonna lost us? Well, no, she's just doing what she's told, and I'm sure everything is staged. It's all because Rocco won't come home. The of. teenager says she's unfazed by the not wardrobe Rocco. malfunction. There's so much for him, and look what he did. It's not a wardrobe malfunction. Madonna did it. Then she said, um, seriously, I didn't think anything about it. I didn't think about anything until other people freaked out about it. Mm -hmm. And then people were saying, okay, well, now what if Madonna was a male performer and did that? Well, what would people they say? Would arrest him they would Exactly. They'd say it was a criminal act. Now, listen to this. This is what I think is interesting. This teenager, I didn't write her name down, but anyway, um, she later was giving an interview, and guess what she was wearing? Not the uh, corset. Uh, nothing on top. Which she claimed belonged to her mother. Anyway, the black, a black Sabbath t-shirt. Mm. So we have Joseph Sabatino, we have Joseph Stalin, now we have Black Sabbath. Wow, you did a lot of investigation. Yeah, and then the mother of this 17-year-old girl posted on Facebook, she was so proud that Madonna spanked her daughter. <laughs> it's Australia, right? Because they're kind of upside down. Yeah. But the point being is, you know, they're imprinting people left and right. I mean, it just it, that's why I said you must do your work, people. You just you must do your work because this well, is Is there any idiocy. wonder that aliens want to take over this? It was like, people are nuts. Yeah, well, I would want to take over this planet. I'd say, they're nuts. Let's go somewhere well, else. They're going to replace everybody. With a hubris. Don't, oh. don't say, don't say, Sorry. don't say, don't okay. say. Okay, go ahead. Your turn. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Well, I got two questions in from my viewers. Yeah. And, uh, well, I'll just, I don't know. Was where it to a begin. general and a doctor offering you money? Uh, no, I actually have an ad out for you on the Nigerian general doctor site. There you go. To, With money. Yes. Mm -hmm. But anyway, this person is from Pennsylvania, and he writes What are your thoughts on the quote unquote second coming of Christ? You've never talked about that before. Yeah, only like a million times. Will it be literal return to this earth by Jesus of Nazareth, who didn't exist that way? Or will some other Savior Christ figure emerge to say the person in Pennsylvania, have you read anything I ever wrote? I wrote about it in Blue Blood book, True World History, about 15 billion videos. We have an uh, alien agenda. Alien agenda. We I mean, have really, the prophecy webinar. It's a stage second coming of Christ. It's a clone Christ. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Read my books. Yeah. Sorry. They're good person. books. Yeah. Next question, and this was either for Stuart or possibly Janet, mm -hmm. if she's not involved with the Nigerian general doctor, no. or so this person wrote. The question is about the, this was actually interesting, about the Caucasus Mountains uh, and the recent discovery of the megaliths that were found deep underneath the mountain ranges there. And uh, he said he read for me about the reptilians manifesting into those mountains. And he sent me two videos, which I did watch. They were, they were interesting. Um, and uh, he wanted to know what my thoughts were. Well, yeah, this is about the red-haired giants, the global artifacts and are all over the world. And uh, the locations, South America, other parts of Europe, North America, Middle East. And we just spoke about this earlier today. And I'm going to do a webinar or a seminar on this uh, later this year, uh, just so that you know these red-haired giants came from uh, Hyperborea in the North Pole and moved south during the time of uh, catastrophic changes on the Earth. It's spoken about in the Bible and in the Apocrypha. Read about, read the Book of Enoch, the Book of Jasher, Book of Jubilees. It's all in there, um, and I will be uh, doing. Uh, seminar, some, some kind of informational well, It might just report. be for our Oversoul Mastermind group, so if you're interested in that, you need to read the website. Yeah, you we need to read, decided. people, please read yeah. my work before you ask the questions. Yeah, we have a lot of work out there. Now, I want to remind people that in June, I have my Clear Health and Healing trip mm. coming up to the Cotian Alps in Italy, where we will be doing some Clear Health and Healing work. Right. We will also be studying the Weld Engine history. And we'll be doing a lot of personal work and in personal investigation with fabulous food. And the thing that I say I want to go back for more than anything is the water, which is amazingly yeah. clear. Yes, the water is like nothing else on earth. Mm -hmm. We're going to be visiting a chocolate factory there too and, uh, and a water That's factory. the real reason you're going. Yeah, but we're going to be doing some hiking, riding some ski lifts. We're going to be doing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're not into hiking, there are places where you can go and just sit and enjoy will, the natural beauty. Will Madonna or Barbie be going? Uh, I hope not. No. 
And we are not sure if you're going to be able to join us. Depends on your schedule because you'll yeah, be in Europe at the I'll same time. I'll be so time. close yet so far. Yeah, where will you be? Well, at that particular time, I might be in Germany or Holland. Mm -hmm. back in Poland. We're not sure. Not positive. But if you can make it, you're going to come and join us for a few days. Yeah. And so, and then I want to remind people that my group fasting webinar starts, and that's a way to clear your body and clear your mind and also prepare for the trip in I Italy. think some of these people's minds are pretty clear right now, let yeah, me tell well, you. We want it to not be empty. We want them to be clear. Oh, There's a difference. difference. There's a difference, right. So the, web, the webinar for fasting is going to be starting soon, and then in April I'm going to be starting my next session of the self-healing group webinar, which is doing very well. Do you think the Nigerian general will come? I hope so. Mm -hmm. And then the last of my self-healing webinar group will will be in May and then we'll take a break for the summer before we start back up in the fall. You're going to take a break for the summer? How come from the I don't webinar. have a break for the summer? I don't know. I don't even have summer. No, that's... Last year I think I went to a place where it was winter. No, well, that's up to you. Hmm. So that's what I have to say. Please like our Facebook fan page. Invite your friends to like to like our Facebook fan pages. Share our Facebook fan pages. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Anything else we need to tell them? Stay away from Madonna. Yeah. Especially if you're have a very, you know, precarious top. Yeah, and don't bring your children to Madonna. Mm -hmm. This is too weird out there. Mm -hmm. Do your oversoul protection work. Sign up for a site membership if you want to know and more things. don't listen to Muslim advice on Palestinian television. No. And do you want more questions if they have any? Yes, but I want questions that are good questions, not that are already in my work. Okay. So that's, there you have it. Yeah, there you have it. Don't make me come over there and give it to you. All right, take care, have a good week, and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye.